Hello everyone and welcome back to Neptune's Child Tarot. My name is Monique and this is my second tarot channel here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for your continued love and your support. And if this is the first time clicking on one of my videos, welcome to the channel. I'd also encourage you to check out my main tarot channel, uh, Moon Moth Goddess. So today's Baker card reading, we are looking into what energies do you need to embody at this time, okay? And that could really be energies that you're embodying for manifestation, for love, for creating wealth and abundance, um, prosperity, whatever it is um, that is coming through for you. If you do feel drawn to more than one pile for this reading, that is perfectly okay. So we are going to be choosing one of these cards here today from the Heavenly Bodies Astrology Oracle. And I do have three crystals from left to right. We have amethyst. In the center, we have red hematoid quartz. And on the far right, we do have a blue rose quartz. So I will give you a closer look at the crystals, but let's get these cards picked out for you. So what energies are you needing to embody at this time? What energies are you needing to embody at this time? Okay, so we have house eight for pile one. It says transformation, karma, facing fears, and also legacies. Let's see, pile number two with the red hematoid quartz. What energies do you need to embody at this time? Okay, so we have house six, establishing a foundation, health, daily life, and also practical details. And let's see for pile number three, the blue rose quartz. What energies do you need to embody at this time? Okay, and then we also have fire, and it says confidence, optimism, passion, and also uh, bravery. Okay, so let's get a little bit of a closer look at your cards. We have house eight and the amethyst for pile number one. Pile number two, we have a red hematoid quartz and that is with house six. And then pile number three, we have the blue rose quartz with the fire card for pile number three. Okay, so like I said, if you do feel drawn to more than one pile, that is perfectly okay. You may have messages spread across uh, the readings here. So pile one with the amethyst, pile two with the red hematoid quartz, and then pile number three with the blue rose quartz. Timestamps will be down below and I will see you guys at your reading. Hi, Pal One. So those of you that resonate with House 8 and the Amethyst, uh, this is going to be a reading. So this will be part of your reading, but I do want to bring out your tarot first to see what energies do you need to embody at this time. That will help you along your path whatever it is you may be working towards. And the eighth house is ruled by Pluto, the house of Scorpio. And so this is about death, rebirth, uh, karma connections. Um, it's also the house of your karma in which the karma that you have incarnated with within this lifetime. And so that can be focusing on transformation within those karmic lessons that you have learned through your experiences and allowing yourself to go through that very deep transformative process of being able to clear out any karmic cycles. It's also a house of, you know, family legacies, inheritance, things of that nature. So for any of you that have, let's just say, incarnated with um, lack, lack mentality, scarcity mindset that has been passed down from generation to generation, this would also be where you kind of clear a lot of that um, as well. So let's see, pile number one, what energies do you need to embody at this time?
Okay, so we have the Five of Cups. What else? Five of Cups. So we do have, again, Scorpio energy. Um, let's see. <clears throat> what energies do you need to embody at this time? We have the King of Wands. Some of you could be Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We also have the Four of Wands. What energies do you need to embody at this time? We have the Three of Cups. Let's see if I can get one more in here. What energies do you need to embody at this time? We have the moon. Okay. So we do also have um, Pisces, Cancer, and also Aries energy. Okay. And then I am seeing the Empress at the bottom of the deck. So I'm definitely seeing this in, in a way you embodying, I feel like overall here we have the Empress and I'm also seeing the Six of Cups right underneath that. So many of you, this is about nurturing, healing, um, mothering, reparenting the self. It's about you stepping into your power. I'm feeling being able to heal any wounds from the past. The Six of Cups, this can be things from your childhood. It can also be things from past connections. Like I said, with the, the Eighth House here, talking about karma and transformation, also facing your fears, right? Like I said, for some of you, it could be coming into this incarnation. For those of you that do believe in past lives, for those of you that do not, I would more or less kind of look at this in terms of the things that you've gone through in your past within this lifetime. Okay, certain karmic situations, connections, relationships, family situations, uh, friendships, okay, and look at it that way, okay? But with the Empress energy here, this is you embodying this energy of unconditional love, of nurturing, of healing, of uh, compassion, empathy, gentleness, kindness, all about the feminine and like I said, this could include reparenting yourself. This could be healing the inner child, reconnecting into the inner child. And I'm feeling this because we do have the five of cups energy here. The five of cups is talking about grief, pain, loss, depression, sadness, uh, regret, shame, guilt. It's all of that very heart heavy type of energy. And then we have the moon energy here. And the moon is a reflection of our subconscious mind, which can hold confusion, fears, illusion, you know, our deepest insecurities, uh, irrational fears that we might have that keep us very clouded and stuck kind of like in an illusion. And so I'm seeing is that you are bringing a lot of these because this can also talk about a lot of repressed feelings and emotions. And so it's kind of illuminating these things, bringing them to the surface for you to be able to heal and so the, you taking on the embodiment of this Empress energy, which is learning how to love yourself, learning to nurture yourself, learning how to be kind and gentle with yourself first and foremost, um, and then being able to kind of extend that energy outwards towards others, okay, which is a very beautiful energy here. And I'm feeling that this is kind of helping you with the King of Wands energy here to help you to truly step into your power. The King of Wands is all about uh, passion and creativity and um, very charismatic energy, very much a natural born leader with talents and skills to lead others. For some of you are natural born leaders, natural born creatives. Some of you very empathic healing energy here as well. And yeah, I'm feeling a lot of this is about you healing a lot of your past. Um, and I feel like in doing so, it's helping you to create more stability and harmony in your relationships, family situations, and even in your connection with others. The Three of Cups can also talk about friendships, um, supportive people, supportive connections around you. Um, 
bringing in a lot more joy and happiness into your own life. Okay. Um, you know, and then also because you're facing fears here, transmuting that energy in a sense into your power, you stepping into your power. A lot of this to me is also connected into the solar plexus chakra, your confidence within yourself. Um, yeah, and I'm looking at how she looks like she's doing some healing here as well. Okay, so very, very beautiful um, energy. I'm just going to put these over here to the side. But that's basically what I'm seeing here is you're embodying this energy of the feminine. Um, and that being something that truly helps you to step into your power. And maybe for some of you, you know, with especially with karma and legacies, this could have been something that occurred within your family line where there was uh, blockages surrounding the feminine, regardless of what your gender is. The Empress is talking about that feminine energy that resides within all of us. And so that can be a time where you really work towards healing uh, yourself, nurturing, mothering yourself. Like I said, for some of you, reparenting. Okay, so let's see what else we've got for you. Pile number one. What energies do you need to embody at this time? And also the Empress is a symbol of abundance and fertility, growth, uh, prosperity. Um, you know, truly believing in the self, in your power, your power to create, your power to manifest. Some of you it may take, you know, tapping back into the wonderment of the inner child and the magic that that brings. The Six of Cups is also about giving gifts of the heart, kindness, generosity. Okay, so we have, I remember, and it says soul plan, the fated life versus the destiny life. Okay, and for many of you, it can be remembering, you know, who you are at your core and being able to kind of clear away any of the fears which are not really you right? Those old wounds from the past, not really you at your core, right? This is you remembering who you are, why you're here, what your purpose is, being able to clear away illusion. Let's see, pile number one, what energies do you need to embody at this time? What energies is pile number one? Okay, so we have three that fell out here, so we're going to take those. Okay, we have loosen your grip and it says coping mechanisms, density, addiction, and also let God in. Okay. And that could be spirit, God, universe, um, mother earth, Gaia, whatever you connect with loosen your grip. To me, this is also speaking a lot about the energy of surrender. Okay. Not trying to force certain situations, but more or less you kind of surrendering to the flow the ebb and flow of life and also with the coping mechanisms, right? To me, this is a lot about past ways of handling, ways of dealing with things, especially for those of you that come from, you know, any type of trauma from your past or even with the, within the inner child, the old ways of, um, you know, self-limiting beliefs, insecurities, um, the old ways of doing things, okay, that are keeping you um, blocked in any way. We also have dance with life here and it says, do something to change your energy. And for some of you that can literally be dancing, dancing is also something that helps to release a lot of energy, uh, change the energy, um, grounding. Okay. Exercising. Maybe something that is also very helpful for you here as well. And then we also have the sacred union and it says beloved within inner and outer relationships. And so to me, like I said, a lot of this is tying back to you learning to really love the self. Okay. Learning to really love the self and finding that union and balance from within the self, right? So that you can then extend that energy, um, outward. So a lot of this is, is talking about your relationship with yourself, 
okay? Transforming the relationship that you have with self. So then you can see how that projects outwards with your relationships with others, okay? Especially if you have, you know, found yourself in situations with others, like friendships, uh, some of you romantic relationships, family situations, where there has been a lot of karmic energy there, karmic cycles, okay? You being able to heal and change that relationship with self is going to be something that is reflecting outwards, with other connections. So let's see what else here. Pile number one. What energies do you need to embody at this time? What energies are you needing to embody at this time? We have the law of attraction. Embody the highest version of yourself. Okay, let's see what else. And I feel like a lot of you for like, you, if you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, how do I do that? <laughs> how do I do that? Um, that can simply be you taking some quiet time to just sit, close your eyes and just take some deep breaths and imagine what your highest and most best version of yourself looks like. What are you doing? Where are you at in life? What does it feel like? And kind of go through all of those energies, right? And then in that moment, what you feel within that energy, it is you embodying that energy, okay? Because the universe works by responding to our vibration, okay? So if we are feeling a lot and holding on to a lot of these things from the past, think about where our energy is at. Right? So if you're wanting to embody this energy, this highest version of self, take some time to think about what that feels like. Imagine yourself, right? In your, in your dream life, doing your dream job. Um, you know, is it that you have financial freedom? Do you have an amazing, beautiful relationship with someone? Do you have harmonious family situations? Dream and imagine of what that feels like. And then kind of, you know, remembering what that feels like as you're, as you're meditating with that and then aligning your energy to that, right? You are, you are acting as if this is already something that is present in your life, right? That's helping you to kind of elevate your energy to that place to help you to draw in and attract everything that you are destined to have within this life, okay? We also have the law of perception and it says, look beyond the illusion to the one truth. Okay. And so to me with that moon energy here, that is where you're looking past those illusions, right? That may have kept you uh, stuck in a place, right? That you are not really wanting to be, but this is you being able to change your perspective and being open to other perspectives, right? Aside from the limited, which may for some of you be very karmic. Okay. Let's see here. Pile number one. What energies do you need to embody? We have the law of giving and receiving. It says give away a material belonging you love to someone. Okay. So that is also about putting you in the flow of, uh, giving and receiving, right? So this is not just giving something that you don't care about um, to someone. <laughs> it's giving something that you love, something that's meaningful to you and giving that to another person, okay? It doesn't just have to be money. It could be something that is special to you, meaningful um, in a sense and that putting you kind of in that flow. I'm actually wanting to get one more for you. Let's see. And then we have the law of rhythm. And it says the universe is guiding you. Go with the flow. Okay? So to me, a lot of that with the loosen your grip here, right, is about you learning to be comfortable with allowing your intuition, allowing the universe uh, to guide you. Okay? So we're going to close this reading out and get some last messages, advice, guidance. Let's 
see. Pile number one. What messages are you needing to hear? You are one decision away from changing your life. Okay, pile one, one decision away from changing your life. So if you've already been feeling something within you, something that is in maybe an inner calling or some type of change that you're wanting to make, okay, this is where this energy here of you embodying the Empress is really helping you, encouraging you, empowering you to feel confident enough to do that, okay, and not letting old karmic ways of thinking be something that holds you back. We have open your heart, stay open to possibilities. It is safe to be vulnerable and trust. We also have focus your energy on what you want the most. Okay. Not what you don't want, but what you want. Right. And that is part of that, uh, law of attraction. Okay. Let's see what else. Move ahead with full confidence. You are on the best path, right? A lot of that comes from you learning how to trust yourself, trust your own uh, intuition. Okay. We have wash away the pain of the past as you offer forgiveness and a fresh start. Let's see, pile number one. We have deception, and it says, be mindful of who you are letting into your life and sharing your dreams and ideas with, okay? We have divine intervention. It says, ask God and your angels for help, if, if, especially if you're feeling stuck um, or, you know, something that you're needing help with. We have start over. It's best to cut your losses and move on, okay? So that may not be for all of you, but some of you may know exactly what this is referring to, okay? So I'm going to leave this here for you, pile number one. I do hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, pile two. Those of you that resonated with house six and the red hematoid quartz, this is going to be your reading today. So we're going to start off with your tarot first, and we're looking at what energies do you need to embody at this time so with sixth house we have virgo energy and this is a lot of detail orientation also ruled by mercury okay and our card says establishing a foundation health daily life and practical details okay so let's see what else Pile number two, what energies do you need to embody at this time? Okay, so we have the star. What energies are you needing to embody at this time? We have the six of wands. Okay, many of you, I feel like this is a glow up for you, a glow up, because the sixth house can also talk about a lot about the way that we take care of ourselves, right? Working on exercise, um, taking the best possible care of ourselves, and not just with that, but also with uh, the people that you allow into your life, okay? Your communication with others, do you feel like when you are giving, do you feel like it's something that you are receiving in return? Okay. A lot of this is about paying attention to those details, right? Your foundation uh, within your life, which includes your, you know, your, your connections, your friendships, your relationship with yourself. We do have the King of Swords and we also have the Page of Pentacles. Okay. Many of you, and I'm feeling that it's, it's kind of like with this, the sixth house here, I'm seeing we have the magician and also the five of wands underneath the deck. Okay. Um, so what I'm kind of getting from this is that it, it's kind of like with the star energy here is about us having hope, faith, trust, uh, belief here. And I'm feeling that because you do also have the king of swords, 
This requires us to be at a level of higher consciousness in, in our words, our communication, our think, thinking, our um, actions um, that we take and about us being in this very clear headspace. So I can understand why for this, it's about you taking a look at all of those details within your own life because I feel like with the star and the six of wands energy here, there's something that you are meant to create. And I feel like it is something that you are meant to start because I'm seeing the page of pentacles energy here. And this is about planting the seed for something new, beginning a new creative project, something I feel like with the magician energy here that you're wanting to manifest. And with the five of wands energy, some of you can be dealing with internal, you know, um, conflict struggles i'm seeing the nine of swords energy here as well and the nine of swords is about anxiety fears worrying maybe even about certain decisions so it's going to be making sure that your own foundation is something that is secure okay within yourself it's about a lot about personal care your work ethic your daily life um of course your health this is you establishing a firm strong foundation um for yourself okay um and strengthening kind of like the framework of your own life and then your being your ability to be able to identify people places things that you give your energy to and if you feel that you're being replenished in return with that energy awesome but if not this is a time for you to then move on move away from right situations that are creating that this is asking you to really Look at how you spend your energy, where you spend your energy, um, a need for you to prioritize self and, you know, with things in your life that bring you balance, make you feel healthy, make you feel whole. Um, it's a need for solidifying, in a sense, your foundation here. Okay. So with that, I'm seeing that, like I said, you do have the magician energy here. And I feel like being that you have the star, the six of wands. This is about gaining recognition. It's about accomplishments and achievements and, you know, getting the recognition that you truly deserve. And I feel like many of you are meant to manifest something amazing here. You know, maybe it's uh, something for you in terms of business or your career opportunities. Um, and so I'm feeling that's where kind of where spirit is saying, making sure that your own foundation is firm and grounded so that you're then able to kind of perceive things from a very clear, logical um, headspace with that King of Swords, you know, so you're able to kind of overcome any of these challenges here. The Five of Wands is also a very incredibly competitive energy, okay? So it's kind of like spirits wanting you to kind of like start in a sense from the ground up, strong, firm foundation, which of course, taking a look at life, right? Is there anything in your life right now that you are aware of that is not in alignment for you? Whether it's a friendship, a certain job, coworkers that you, you know, interact with, you know, whatever it is, or even going into the way that you take care about yourself. Are you getting enough rest, right? Are you sleeping good? Are you have poor eating habits? Um, you know, taking a look at all of those little details to make sure that you are feeling your best, the best version of self, okay? Because it really helps you with, especially with this magician energy as you are working towards manifesting whatever it might be, whether it's love or uh, jobs, careers, you know, uh, things of that nature, okay? So for, maybe for some of you with the star energy here, that could even be healing, right? Working on healing uh, the self or even taking a look at the certain fears that you have and why those fears uh, might be there. Okay, so let's go into this energy here. Yeah, many of you, I feel like you're meant to be in the spotlight. There's something that you're meant to create here. A star and the six of wands, something that you're meant to gain recognition for. Some of you, it could be, you know, like starting something where you're using your voice here, maybe a podcast, maybe teaching um, motivating others, uh, sharing your story, writing. Um, let's see what else, anything to do with communication, finding solutions, helping people, helping others, if that's what you feel called to. 
right? But this is really embodying this energy of the King of Swords. Like I said, is higher consciousness. It is mastering of our thoughts and our, you know, bringing our thoughts into alignment with the best, highest version of self, okay? Which includes letting go of fears, right? And sometimes we need to take a look at our life a little bit more in detail because there could be certain underlying things that are creating challenging, like let's just say, perfect example, you've got stuff going on at home, right? You've got a family situation that's going on. And because of that family situation that's going on, it's affecting your work. It's affecting your friendships. It's affecting your relationships or even vice versa, right? You've got a, a, a love situation that is draining a lot of your energy, and it's affecting your confidence in yourself. It's affecting your thinking, right? Your, your ability to make clear decisions. So let's see here. Pile number two. What energies do you need to embody at this time? And the magician is also the power of will. It's, it's about us knowing within ourselves that we have to ma the power to manifest, the power to co-create. Okay, so let's see here. What energies does pile number two need to embody at this time? We have perspective. Okay, it says none of this matters. Zoom out and common ground. Okay, so there may be some things that you might be like super, let's just say super fixated on. And it's kind of like spirits wanting you to kind of take a step back. Okay, and, and just kind of look at things maybe from a different perspective here. Let's see, pile number two. What energies do you need to embody? We have your life is a canvas, artist, manifestation, and creative accountability. Okay, so this is also you recognizing that you are the creator, okay, within your own life. Um, and this is also with the creative accountability here to me. This is about you understanding that sometimes our own energy reflects outwards within the life and the experiences that we have. Okay. Certain decisions, um, that we get ourselves into, let's just say that you go into a friendship and you notice early on, there are red flags in that friendship with someone who's, you know, draining your energy, someone who's often, you know, leaving you in a place where you feel like you're giving more into the friendship and you have those red flags right? You know that, <laughs> you know that, you see it, but you let it keep going and keep going and keep going until you get to this point in your life where there is a huge upheaval, huge upheaval, you know, in your life because of that friendship. It causes disaster in some, in some way. Okay. And you end up getting hurt in that friendship, right? This is us taking that accountability of understanding. Yes, we've seen the signs, we've seen the red flags, but, you know, sometimes we end up in those situations, we kind of push them aside, right? So that's kind of where spirit is saying here, take a look very, very carefully, right? At what we have in our life right now, are these connections, you know, anything that we're doing even within any part of our life that is leading us to a place where we don't really want to be, okay? So let's see here. Pile number two. What energies do you need to embody at this time? We have the golden children and it says inner child, tenderness, innocence, and also rare gifts. Okay, so some of you can be reconnecting in with your inner child. Okay, that may even help you with your creativity. And then we have Earth School here, Life Lessons, Soul Growth, Study, and it says Higher Learning, okay? So this may even be taking, as you're taking a look at your life in detail, what lessons are you currently learning, right? Maybe which ones are you struggling with? Which ones are you feeling challenged by? What are you learning from them? How are they helping or hindering you? Okay, so let's see what else... Pile number two, what energies do you need to embody at this time? We have the law of giving and receiving. Give away a material belonging 
you love to someone. Okay? So that putting you in that flow with the universe of, of kindness, of generosity, a gift of the heart. What energies do you need to embody at this time? We have the law of tithing and it says expand your consciousness and all things will be added. Okay. Let's see what else. We have the law of love and it says your heart knows no bounds. Okay. So to me that is the emb embodiment of love, right? Love for yourself. Um, so that you can then extend that energy outwards. We also have the law of eternality. And it says live like you're dying, right? Which means that we're not allowing fears to hold us back. You know, from anything that you are wanting to experience or accomplish within uh, this lifetime. Okay. Living your best life, child two. Living your best life. Okay, so let's get some guidance, advice, any last messages that Spirit has for you. What energies do you need to embody? What is your advice and your guidance for pile number two? We have forgive yourself and those who have hurt you. Let the tears cleanse you. Okay, so that speaks a lot of emotional release. We have, you are one decision away from changing your life, okay? One decision away from changing your life. Okay, so we have start or stop hiding. It says start sharing your brilliance and gifts with the world as you step into the spotlight. And that's what I'm seeing with the star and the six of wands. It's about you being recognized, you gaining some type of recognition there. Do not settle for less than you're worth. Negotiate for more and ask for what it is you want. And that could even be what you do, you know, in relationships, friendships, or even at jobs. Okay, let's see. We have embrace the storm as you face your deepest wounds and darkest emotions. Eliminate doubt. Let go of the old limiting beliefs that used to hold you back. Good news. Get ready for even greater results than expected. And let's see your last one. Pile number two. We have do not let other people's opinions cloud your judgment. There is no need to please others or worry about expectations. Honor your own needs first and learn to trust yourself without needing approval from external influences. Okay, so that is all that I have for you. Pile number two. I do hope this was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, pile three. So those of you that resonated with the fire card and the blue rose quartz, this is going to be a reading. So your card says confidence, optimism, passion, and bravery. As far as what energies do you need to embody at this time? And you've got fire. So this is about, in a, in a way, getting things lit, getting that fire started. This is the, you know, the, the fire that starts within all of us, the passion, the drive um, that we have for something. It could be the beginning of something. Of course, fire, the energy of fire is not something that is sustainable all on its own. It requires action, right? But this is that, that beginning stage, that force, that energy that we extend. So, of course, it does require, you know, other things for us to get something done. But this is basically where you are kind of getting that passion and that fire kind of lit within you again and feeling confident enough to you know, pursue things or to ch make changes into your life. So let's see here. Pile number three, what energies do you need to embody at this time? We have the lovers. We have the Six of Cups. 
We have the Knight of Wands. Six of Wands. And then we also have the Hanged Man. Okay, so I'm kind of seeing this in a, in a way with your fire energy here. Okay, the embodiment of that energy, but also with the hanged man. The hanged man is about a change or a shift in perspective. And so I'm seeing the lover's energy here in a way that you are finding this balance and this union with inside of the self. Okay, uh, the six of cups energy to me is going to be about you reconnecting back into, I feel like, your inner child. Okay, and that may be for the creative energy here that comes along with this passionate energy, fiery energy. Um, maybe for some of you, it is addressing any type of wounds that you might have. Okay, at the bottom of the deck, I am seeing the King of Cups. And then we also have the Four of Cups. Okay, Five of Pentacles is also right underneath that. The Five of Pentacles is an energy of lack, of scarcity. And it could be a certain mindset that we are holding on to, right? The Four of Cups is also speaking of boredom, indifference, feeling unhappy, feeling discontent, okay? So I am feeling with the King of Cups energy here, there is a lot of creative energy. Um, also, many of you are very intuitive, very creative. So it's also about you finding balance within your own feelings, your own emotions, stabilizing them. Because for some of you, this could be bordering along feeling depressed, feeling sad, just feeling unhappy. And so many of you can be looking to your inner child um, for healing, bringing about balance with inside of yourself with the lover's energy here. And you have the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Wands is all fire, all fire, all passion, drive, feeling confident. Um, the Knight of Wands is kind of like that energy of a teenager where there's just all this spontaneity all this fire, all this drive of wanting to go and dream and do and accomplish. And the Six of Wands energy to me is about you maybe even reducing, I feel like working on the ego, okay? Getting the ego under control and not letting the ego be something that keeps you away from, you know, certain things that you do want to accomplish, okay? So I'm feeling like this fire energy may be something that really is very helpful for you to embody that and finding balance, right? The lovers is also about us making choices of the heart, being led by our heart, being led by intuition. You know, the Knight of Wands is also a very confident and brave energy of just kind of trying things, doing things, you know, being very spontaneous. And the Six of Wands is about being able to have victory, success, achievements, um, recognition, right? Uh, I feel like it's also about you recognizing yourself, but also others recognizing you, especially where it's important with, um, let's just say your job, your career, right? You're kind of putting yourself in the spotlight um, there as well. Okay. So let's take a look at some more messages for you here. But yes, I'm feeling there's a need to tap into your intuition, your creative energy, bringing about a balance of feelings and emotions, finding that union with inside of the self, the merging of both the feminine and the masculine energies within you. And that may include healing, right? Any suppressed feminine, any suppressed masculine energy, lack of confidence, low self-esteem. Okay. Okay. So let's see. We have your life is a canvas, artist, manifestation, and creative accountability. Okay. So if you, I will say, if you're feeling kind of like four of cups, which is not very happy. Okay. About your life right now. This is where you take accountability, right? For your decisions, your choices, um, that may have led you into some type of unfavorable type of situations. Okay, let's see what else. You know, some things are also outside of our control. Okay, but it's also how we choose to uh, respond to those things, how we choose to move on from certain situations or how we choose to handle certain things. Okay. So, of course, yes, some of it is our own doing, you know, getting ourselves in situations that we'd rather not have. 
Um, but sometimes there are things that are outside of our control that we go through that happen to us. Um, experiences that we go through that are very challenging, right? But then we also have a choice. You know, what do we do in that moment, right? How do we respond to that type of situation? We have, you're not for everyone. And it says, embrace your weirdness and face your true north. Okay? Which talks to me also about you not needing validation from anyone. Okay? You don't need to have the approval or seek the approval of others for what you choose to do. But it is you embracing your truest and most authentic version of self. We also have fall into my arms and it says surrender, holding the opposites and also the extremes of life. So maybe for some of you, it has been, you know, a lot of very challenging situations that you have found yourself in. We also have cracked open here and it says rock bottom and it says surrender to the alchemy of life. Okay, but look at how she's kind of in a way where she's cracking herself open or cracking open. It's revealing her beautiful spiritual self. Okay, so sometimes with the energy of surrender, this is a need for us to kind of just let go and not try to force things, not try to control things. Um, I'm also feeling like this transmutation of energy that's also happening for you here as well, right? Open to change, open to new perspectives. Let's see here, pile number three. What energies do you need to embody at this time? We have the law of manifestation. Let go of trying to control life and allow miracles. Okay, let's see. We have the law of truth. Love unconditionally and create healthy boundaries. Pile number three. Let's get two more of these. We have the law of eternality and it says live like you're dying. And another pile got this here as well. That is about you living your best life. Okay, living your best life. If there's anything in your life right now that is not making you feel completely content, happy, fulfilled, you know, maybe it, it takes a, a, a pause, reflection, right? To have that change and shift in perspective to really see what you are truly worth, what you're truly deserving of, what is possible for you to be able to have within your life. We also have the law of action, and it says, get out of your comfort zone and take bold action today. And that's kind of what we're seeing with this energy of fire. Okay. Like I said, it's not something that just kind of works on its own. Of, sort, of course, yes, it's the, it's the start, right? We're starting there with, the, with that fire being lit within us. Okay. So let's get some last messages for you. And this one's just popping out. We have surrender. You are safe and protected. Relax now into the comfort of relief. Pile number three. We have a love and accept yourself exactly the way you are. Be bold with your imagination. Let it run wild. Every pile got this. You are one decision away from changing your life. That is crazy. We also have, what is this? Don't forget there are no limits when it comes to what you want. Follow your dreams and let your heart guide you. Find ways to simplify your life and be more in balance with nature. And your last message, pile three, you've got two of them. Okay, so it says, good news, get ready for even greater results than expected. But of course, your fire energy, right, requires action. We've got the law of action here. Get out of your comfort zone and take bold action today. And then we also have stop hiding. And it says, start sharing your brilliance and gifts with the world as you step into the spotlight. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here for you, pile number one. I do hope this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next reading.